Welcome to Raw Radio. And we are live. Yes, we are. Fantastic, fantastic conversation we just had. I'm super excited. Man, I just feel like... I feel like every episode is better than the one before. Well, you know, we've had, there's been some hiccups here and there, but <laughs> <laughs> this one was good. This one was good. Uh, and I think that the, the quality of the guests and the people uh, we've had recently is just uh, unbelievable. The knowledge, the fun that we've had with these people uh, that we don't even really know. I mean, you've had some contact with them. Uh, booking and stuff like that, but uh, but once we get on the air, you know, you never know how it's going to go and what's going to happen. Uh, but they've all been so personable and and just a ton of fun. I, I'm, uh, absolutely. But be, before we get to this, let's talk about the change that we are making sure. as far as the giveaway because yeah. I think that's important. Um, so we 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 heard you guys, and um, we want to change things up a little bit to, you know, to bring more benefit to you more than anything else. But um, we're going to change the giveaway a little bit, the Fuji giveaway, the Gi giveaway. We're going to raise the odds for the individuals who continuously, um, you know, entering and 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 giving, um, you know, g- give them the opportunity to really engage in, right? So um, go to theroadradio.com. Go to our website. We will put um, a, um, a form where you can submit a question to our guest. Yes. Right? And what we will do is we'll incorporate this question into the five question that we five questions that we do end of each episode. Right? So um and we'll choose those questions randomly, right? So just keep it clean. I know some of you guys out there. Keep it clean, keep, keep it general. Keep it clean, right? keep it general, keep it professional, right? So obviously the non-clean ones are unfortunately we're not going to be able to do. However, interesting questions will, you know, will, will bring those up and this also is going to be random, so it's nothing specific. But if your questions was selected or will be selected, well, obviously we'll mention your name so you get a shout out during the show and obviously your question will be answered by the guest. Uh, but also any entry will automatically be entered. Why are you laughing? Because is- you're really amped up right now. No. I am stoked about this. I think this is cool. And I had like three cups of coffee. Um, but, but, you know, you automatically get entered into the give giveaway each month. And then, um, you, uh, uh, what, I lost train of thought. You completely Because I laughed at you? Yeah. 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 You're All right. So this. at the end of every month, though, we're also going to wipe the slate clean, right? So enter again. Come up, Same question. It doesn't matter. Come up no, with something new, new question. I want a new question. It can be the same question because you question. didn't get picked, but it is going to greaten the odds for you um, because everything gets cleared, right? Right now, the way, the old way it was, we've got hundreds and hundreds of submissions. Um, this is probably going to narrow it down, right, because it's monthly instead of mm-hmm. accumulating, mm-hmm. and uh, and your odds are going to go up to get one of those amazing geese. Yeah, so um, essentially, listen. Drop the question in. And listen, honestly, take this opportunity to ask the questions that you really wonder. Like, as you listen to these episodes, I know I listened to them way back, and I was like, I wish I asked that question. I completely, like, the conversation deviated in a different direction. Sometimes we have these, you know, things that we wonder about jiu-jitsu, you know, things that come up, and, and maybe maybe we don't get the answers, or maybe we don't have the opportunity to ask, you know. Um, drop those questions in. We will... One, draw some of those questions during the during the show, and then we'll ask those questions. You might get the answers that you're seeking. Plus, you get automatically entered into the Fuji Gi giveaway. Um, I mean, at this point, I look at this as a win-win. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. It's going to be fun, too. I think some of these questions are going to be a lot of fun. So, fingerprint, huh? No, we're not doing the fingerprint. What are we doing? We are doing the fish. We're doing Don't the fish. Don't be a fish. Listen, there were so many golden... Golden nuggets during during this episode that it's um, between Gary and I we had a hard time really um, to pick what the focal point would be of the takeaway. One is the fish. Yeah. Don't be a fish. <laughs> Don't be a fish. Yeah. What does that mean? What does that mean? Well, uh, I'll try. I'll shoot. Go. Uh, Dedeco was saying that you know sometimes you've only got one thing in your bag of jujitsu tricks, right? And when you take a fish out of water. What's that fish do? Yeah, I'm taking a selfie right now. That fish flaps around. That fish does not know what to do with himself, right? But 
if you've got a lot of tools in your toolbox, whatever cliche you want to use, uh, I'm trying to think if there's a, a fish one I could use. Um, when you're pulled out of your game, you're going to be able to adapt, right? A fish can't adapt to living on land, but you can adapt if you've got a lot of things to work with um, instead of just always relying on the one thing. What is the saying? Don't be one something wonder. What is, it, what is the thing? Jesus Christ. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know. Right. Forget I it. I don't know. There's a saying what do you, that I remember, but I, I don't No, know. you don't remember it. <laughs> one, po- one pony or something. I don't know. Ponies. Now we're talking, <laughs> first we're talking yes. about fish. Now we're talking about ponies. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on here? <laughs> this show is going to oh, derail. Oh, man. Yeah. Uh, but no, you're right. Because, you know, I think jujitsu, the difficulty in jujitsu comes in not necessarily from knowing the techniques because we can memorize them, but really understanding the larger concepts and larger um, principles behind, um, you know, the series of techniques or the position. Mm -hmm. And and I think this is that, that's really what, what the deck was um, emphasizing on. Don't know one thing. Don't be focused on one thing. Be familiar with, a lot of things, you know, and because that's what's going to give you the variety of situations and, and more opportunities to really um, execute efficiently, right? Once you are removed from the situation where, you know, just hypothetically, let's say phenomenal pressure passer, but once... Thank you. Once that... <laughs> that's the one and only compliment you get today. Um once that is shut down and you have to venture out into other opportunities, now your success is going to be much lower. Now, if we take this, if one was not familiar with anything else, but that one pass that he does, now his success is going to, well, just randomness, mm-hmm. right? So the, you know, don't be a fish. Good, good statement, I think. Good, good, um, Good point to emphasize. Be familiar with the concepts. Be familiar with the situations. Don't be afraid to put yourself in the vulnerable positions to explore what might happen. I think a big part of jiu-jitsu is really exploration and troubleshooting. You know, I often encourage my students, go in this position. Don't, don't deviate from the plan, but at the same time, explore. Ask yourself, what if? What would happen if this happened? What is my partner's reaction? What is my reaction? What is my partner doing? Where is his weight? Where are they trying to achieve? Try to understand what the other side is trying to achieve, right? I often say, understand why, why things happen. And once you understand why, now we can make some intelligent decisions and put some, put some thoughts behind the decisions that we are making to bring more success to us. Yeah, I think that it's always about concepts over moves. Um, and when you are able to string things together and like you said, why, um, you know, why can he not hip escape? If all I'm doing is raising his hip off the ground, three inches, right? Why? Well, now, you know, anytime you do that, whatever position you may be in, whatever your Uh goal is, whatever you're trying to achieve, you're going to be successful or more successful. Your odds are better, whatever you want to say. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and, and when you get that deeper knowledge, right. And it doesn't mean that the deeper knowledge, I think a lot of people get fooled is um, I can, now I know all the submissions, right. Now I know a million ways to pass. Um, I think the deeper knowledge is those fundamental little things of raising somebody's hip off the floor a little bit, right. Why that's so important. Why, You know, now they can't escape. They just Mm -hmm. can't, right? It's impossible. Mm -hmm. You need that hip on the floor to to scoot out. You need that foot on the floor to do whatever you want to do. And when you start understanding those things, um, it just opens up a whole new world that when, you know, the thing that you do like to do, the thing that you're really, you think, you know, that you're really good at, when that maybe gets shut down, well, now you've got a plan B or another route, other opportunities, you know, and you're not just, flopping around like a dead fish or, or like Hickson said, <laughs> <laughs> like it's Hickson said, without feathers. Yes, yes, <laughs> the kid that you're, you're like an Eagle. 
with no, no feathers. feathers. <laughs> and you just flop, flop, <laughs> flopping around. <laughs> I love that quote. That is a great one. That was awesome. Well, another another big part of all this was, you know, um, our size, left and right, right? And, oh, and, yeah, and yeah, the doctor yeah. talked about it extensively, right? Matter of fact, he has the... Uh, a rule or one of the things in dur- during their training at, at at their academy is that you oh no that was De La Hiva that was De La Hiva, De La Hiva. when he was young yeah yeah De La Hiva made them do it that you you do five times on your good side but twenty five times on your bet on the on your left side on the other side yeah. the unorthodox side right in such a brilliant way of approaching the situation because well we all have the left side. Yep. We all have the other side. Yep. You're right, and it, it, it is sometimes it's challenging to adopt these motions to um, on on that on that side yeah. is just is more more challenging for our brain to coordinate and uh, execute them as efficiently I'm laughing because I just I, I it happens it happens to all of us yes and I love what the deco said is he he tells his students they have a strong side and then they have the other strong side <laughs> there's no weak side there's no weak right? side uh, it's funny I always say I have a weak side and then the other weak side but <sighs> strong side and other strong side, you know, get both, get good at both. Um, then you're not, again, you're not going to be a fish out of water when things happen, right? Because somebody might know, hey, if I go to the left on this guy or if I go to the right on this girl, she's not, you know, they're not going to be able to stop me, right? And you don't want to be known for that. Yeah, no, I, I, I 100%, 100% agree. What, what do you think this does to us when we focus on the larger picture? When we, we we are not necessarily a master of one trick, of one motion, but we have a deeper understanding of more of a global concept. What does it do for us? What, just on the mat? Yeah, just general? on the mat. How, what improvement we can gain from that? It, I mean, it, like I said earlier, I think it just opens up a world of opportunities for you. You don't have to, um, you're not going to rely on the one thing. Right. You know, if you don't want your guard passed, you've got to know a lot about passing. Right. I'll challenge that. Okay. Do you need to go, do you need to know a lot about passing or do you need to know a lot about guard? I th- both. I think both. You do. Right. Because you know, you need to know where they're, even though you can't read their mind, you can read their physicality and you need to know the probability of where they're going, right? The steps they're taking, right? So you need to know that in order to put your body where it needs to be to shut that down. Mm-hmm. So you need to know both. You can't, you can't, and you can't be a great passer, I don't think, without being understanding guard. It goes hand in hand. So, going back to what you were saying just a little bit ago, you kind of need to know a little bit about everything. Right. And I'm not talking about like be a Jack of all trades and a master of none. You need to, you need to know these things. And once you do know them, um, then all your opportunities start opening up and and you're going to have more fun. You're going to be playing around instead of struggling or, you know, being, being smashed. Uh, I think it makes jujitsu more fun. This is why, I personally believe that when we train or study techniques, working with your partner is critical to our improvement. What I mean by now, let me let me set an example. Let's just say that we stick with the passing the guard and I'm passing your guard and then we switch, you pass my guard. Being a dead fish while you passing my guard is wasting time for me. What one really can, where I think one can really improve, not only be a good training partner while you drilling the technique, is me reading what you are trying to achieve and me sharpening the tools from the other side. So me really trying to understand how I can be defending the guard while you are passing it. So when I'm passing it, I already know what might be happening. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think so. But are you saying that you're not, it's it's difficult because like if you know your partner is drilling something. I'm not saying create resistance. Okay. I'm saying try to understand what they are doing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Don't just be there. Let them do what they want. 
read their emotions, talk to your co partner, provide them feedback. Hey, listen, these elbows are far away. You're going to get caught in the Malpada. Tap, tap, tap. 28 tap. times. If you listen don't know what I'm talking about, <laughs> listen to the Deco's episode, okay? Uh, funny story. You're going to be on the floor. But, um, you know, those things are important. Being just a, a dead body, a flop, doesn't serve either well, no, one you of might you might as well right? get a jujitsu dummy at right that point. right but it, providing the feedback from the other perspective really stimulates your mind you might not be training protecting the guard at that point on the opposite side of the technique but you are challenging your mind to see what happens if you're creating these troubleshooting scenarios which you know when the situation reverses now it's your turn to drill it really stimulates your mind. Oh, this is what it feels like. This is where he is. This is what she's yeah. doing. This is where the weight distribution takes place. How about these grips on the top, bottom, side, whatever the case might be? Ah, I saw this opening. This is where this opening would take place. Yeah, I think that's great. And I also think it's in doing it live in the moment is good too. Listen, I, I you know how I feel about my technique and, and stuff like that. But I think at this when you are letting somebody drill something, if you see them doing things that are wrong, obviously, you know, making mistakes, elbows out, whatever it may, the case may be, um, showing them like, like I forget who said it. Uh, but it was like, I think it was a uh, kid again, but training with like when he trains with white belts and blue belts and purple belts is like, he gives them a little bite. He doesn't submit yeah. them, yeah. but he gives them a little bite. Like, mm -hmm. Oh, see, this is what could Ca happen. Catching, catching a release. Yeah. This is what, oh, bringing it back to fish. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but he gives them a little bite. It's all flows together. Yes. Um, he gives them a little bite. Now they know not to do that. Mm -hmm. Or if they don't, then he explains it later, right? Um, yeah, and I think those are great things to do when your partner's drilling too. Is like, hey, this was, you see this opening? I saw it. Now you see it too, that type of stuff. So it's cool. That's good. Don't be a fish. Good stuff. Don't be a fish. Don't be a fish. I mean, there, there are some golden golden nuggets in this I episode. I was just going to say the worst pun, pun to a, a be a shark. <laughs> <laughs> well, that just went out. No, no they're a great. These, I mean, we talk to people. We are so fortunate enough to talk to guys that have been doing this for a really, really long time, who have taken it very, very seriously and understand it. You know, we're talking about understanding concepts. Like they understand jujitsu as a concept. Mm -hmm. And I, I think we're very fortunate. And I think the people that listen uh, are very fortunate as well. I agree. I Lucky. agree. Off to the next one. Sure. All right, sir. Later. Peace. Peace. Thank you for listening to Raw Radio. If you enjoyed the show, don't forget to leave us a review and help us make the show even more amazing. For future episodes, check out our website and follow us on all major podcast platforms. Take care. Thank you.